Afternoon guys, um, we're just going to do a quick video today uh, talking about the new CHR90 driver which you'll be able to see on my website and on the Mark Audio website. Um, I've got Mark Fenlon here today um, just to talk about um, this new driver and, uh, and some of the design ideas behind it. Um, so Mark, if we can um, just come over to you a moment and uh, you can give us a brief introduction to the driver, that would be great. Oh, well, uh, thanks Stefan and hello everybody. Um, yeah, welcome to uh, sunny, uh, sunny South Wales, interestingly, because uh, obviously with uh, COVID, we're all spread out all over the place, aren't we? So the first thing we ought to say is, I do hope everybody's well, uh, oh, as well as they can be. So onwards with the driver. Um, there's the beastie. Um, this driver answers a request. Uh, the request for many years that has always been knocking around is, can we get more base out of you know, out of full range drivers. And uh, we wanted, I think, really, Stefan, to go one stage further, didn't we? we, we we've, we've always felt that uh, inside of the Mark Audio family, there could be a, a driver or a series of drivers that could be effectively great utility drivers. They're still sure. full range, yeah. they operate as full range, you know. Uh, but they are venture into the multi-way market where people feel the need. And um, the CHR90 um, is, is, is the, really the start of that process, I would say. Um, well, to be fair, if we look back um, to the CHR70, which is now, gosh, 2008, I think, I produced that driver. Um, in, a, in a way, that... that also set the scene because that's been a great utility driver, full range, but has had some base capability within its size. Um, the CHR90, uh, given, its, given its relative size, um, you know, in terms of the, 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 the physical size of it, um, there you go. Um, it's the gold one. <laughs> you know, it, 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 yeah, exactly. You've got a gold one. Um, we can visualize this in a, in a box, either as a, as, a, as a single point source system, one pair of is one pair of drivers. Um, or we can certainly visualize that as part of a multi-way system. Uh, you can imagine a little tweeter above it. Um, <laughs> and um, the, the nice thing about the CHR90, compared to say another, say a 4.55, 5.5 inch uh, mid base, is the, cap cap the base capability of the CHR90 it's comparable pretty much to any similar size mid base on the market. There are variations, of course, but- um, And that, that, that's reality, presumably because it, it's a much it's tougher driver. Cutting. Yeah. That's presumably because it's a much tougher it's driver. Serious. I mean, in terms of, yeah. It, yeah, big old magnet. In magnet. terms of the physical construction, you know. Yeah. yeah. Loads of excursion, it's, it's, good strong code. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it, the, the cone, um, compared to some of our more advanced drivers, like the MAOP drivers, which are, or the, uh, the MS11 drivers, MS7, for example, they are very purist drivers, uh, single suspension, negative yes. camber cone. Yeah. Very much, very much for the very, very high end of the market, the, 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 um, you know, the audio files, the guys who want something a bit special. The CHR is always, our CHR range of which, you know, this is the latest. It's very much about satisfying the broader needs uh, for good quality music, because this will yeah. play good quality. Yeah. But, but you, you can more or less put it almost, not quite in anything, but you know, we know people are putting them in flower pots and they work. <laughs> yeah. um, we, know, we know people are using them uh, as part of multi-way systems and they work. We know people are using them in, uh, in, 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 in even in, very small public address and public areas, they work. Uh, they're, they're a very, very good all round serviceable driver with the one advantage. If you want to remain purest full range, you can. Yes. Uh, yes. Can you flash up the frequency response? Um, oh, I certainly can. Hopefully, bear with me a moment. Oh, I can. That is not the frequency response. I'll come back to that though. Uh, there we go. There's the frequency yeah. response for you. So this is on my website, obviously, you know, for those who want um, to study it in more detail. Absolutely, and that's that's grand, Stefan. Uh, I mean, for any anybody, 
for the, those who are familiar with frequency frequency responses, um, I think most people would agree there'll be a few dissenters, but the most people will agree with me that 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 frequency response is pretty benign. You know, it's it's um, you, you're looking at um, you know around ninety dB plus minus a few dB down or up, uh, right across the range, and and I can just make out there that it's 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 going well past twenty kilohertz, and um, um, it falls off at just below 100. So yeah, I mean certainly for something that we're uh, yeah. that we're talking about yeah. being a sort of full range driver, that's as uh, sort of stable as it gets yeah. really. It, it's a, it's it's a decently near flat response, which um, the, the tuners, box tuners, and um, whether you're a single uh, single driver, free range box maker and tuner or whether you're into doing alternatives with uh, multi-way. Either way, you've got a pretty benign, pretty relaxed frequency response there. No real um, eccentricities within it. And, um, you, you know, help yourself to how you tune it, more or less. Um, and similarly, uh, I don't know if you can flash up the um, impedance response there. Uh, yeah, I certainly can. can. No, that's thing. definitely worth talking about. Uh, there we go. Yeah, absolutely. Again, you can see it's very linear, uh, right through to well past, um, well past sort of, uh, well, it doesn't really start to rise until around 12, 15,000 hertz, you know. And that's great for those people who want to use very, it as a, as a sort of mid bass driver and I want to cross it sort of here, or even if exactly. they want to cross it here as a, as a sort of mid range. Um, yeah. That, that works very well. Um, you know, there's not going to have to be too much messing yeah. around in the uh, crossover filter to flatten that impedance at all. There, really. Indeed. So, so if you're if you're a multi, if you you know if you go in multi-way, if you're thinking of multi-way, it's got lots of potential. If you're thinking of single full range classic. It's a very smooth driver with a lot of usable range, and um, uh, so. Um, it's, I wouldn't like to say jack of all trades because that always sounds a little bit not good at anything because I, I don't <laughs> believe that's what we've done. I think we've produced the, you know, we, I, I honestly think we've produced the, well, I mean, so we should. Let's have a think about this. Mark Audio now has been going for, gosh, almost two decades. So we ought to, we, we, we're proud of, to have got to this stage where we can produce this type of driver uh, with this type of very near even response with a very good impedance response um, with decent efficiency. It's almost what ninety dB, mm. um, and uh, and 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 we we I think you and I will encourage people to make use of every aspect of the driver offers. You know, it's got great excursion, so it's going to push some air. Um, it's decently efficient. It's got an, it's got a reasonably flat or near flat response, and. Um, uh, you know the F zero on it is in the low 40s, so it's fine. It makes it useful for pretty much all musical applications. Um, it's a classic CHR in that respect, uh, a bigger CHR, uh, and and I'm glad we've responded to the to the to the uh, requests over the years to to produce drivers that will increasingly be useful in various fields. I think that's the key to the CHR 90 is that it's 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 it is versatile you know and it's interesting makes, isn't it i think there, there, are, very there, there are lots more people out there now who are using a, a full range driver with either a woofer at one end or a tweeter at the other oh, end. yeah um and uh, you know this sort of just adds fire to that um, you know to that particular group of people i think there are also you know the group of people that are using much smaller drivers like the uh, sort of chn50 alp air fives and that sort of thing with you know bigger woofers so you know this may work work well with, with that's interesting yeah, um, there are obviously um, and it, a lot of parallels yeah. between this driver uh, frame and the Alpair mm. driver frame, the older Alpairs, you know, the Alpair tens yeah. and, and what have you. So I wondered if you could talk a little bit about, um, you know, how how some of that technology may have trickled down, and you know what the obvious uh, parallels to draw between the two yeah. ranges are, uh, or, or, or even what yeah. the differences are really between the two ranges. You know, what what would you say really? Um, really mean CHR and what would you say really means out there? Yeah. yeah. When, when, whenever you're producing drivers, as we do, or any manufacturer does, 
um, you you are always trying to balance um, cost with performance. And what I like about the work we've done on the CHR 90 is we, we have inevitably trying to keep the cost affordable. That's the first thing. And they are so ridiculously affordable. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, two decades old, we're getting better at this. And um, this is a, okay, if we're looking at uh, some of the more modern frames, we're using uh, more complex materials where we're introducing into, in the case of say the uh, MS drivers, for example, they use a form of glass fiber weave. So that's a mixture of um, glass fiber and I think it's about three different, it's three different forms of, of plastic, it includes ABS. Now that obviously makes for a more, uh, a, 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 a stiffer frame, but one that can be made, you know, small, less thick in, in the mounting, for example. Um, Oh, you might have one. There you go. Ah, it's a hand. It's a hand, indeed. <laughs> there so there we go. There's a, there's a right. previous seven. Yes. Yeah. Maybe seven HD, I should say. Classic, that's a classic, classic example. We, you can see just Stefan from, the, from just the way you hold it. Yeah, exactly. You can see the difference in the mounting thickness there. Yeah. Now, now, fair enough, you can, uh, you can say, well, um, this takes a little bit more effort to come out. would agree with that. But at the end of the day, it's still not that bad. It's a pretty decent frame. Uh, it's very even around the, you know, in terms of that thickness there, it's around about 4.5 mil. So most people are capable of surface mounting it and recessing it. Yeah. Um, however, what we can say is the, um, uh, uh, when you compare this, this ABS frame, which is a single plastic, molded injection plastic, with, uh, say, for example, an older Alpair 10 ABS frame, this yeah. frame is about 15 to 20% more rigid. Right, okay. It, um, we have perfected the way we use ABS, and, uh, yeah. and, and there's a particularly solid feel to this frame. Uh, early frames were inevitably... Um, you know, it's early days for us with the Alpair 10s and things like that. But if you get hold of a CHR 90 frame, it's pretty, pretty darn tough. You know, it's that pretty is, stiff. Yeah. So, so we are offering, we're offering the value that people need in this range of driver, but we've improved upon it. Yeah. Um, uh, so it, it's still a performance uh, advance, even though we're using a single a single grade material, ABS, as opposed to multi-grade or multi-mix materials like we do on Pluvius and, and on um, MS drivers. So um, it, it, it is at, afford and at, it's at an affordable price, but I think you and I would, I think we're both proud to say, Stefan, aren't we? It's not a bargain basement driver. No, um, absolutely not. Yeah, and that's, yeah. you know, to, to, to be honest, when, um, when I get uh, samples from the factory, as you know, Thomas uh, sends me sends me a pair, a couple of pairs from the factory. And at that point, I don't really know what they are, what the price point is going to be, uh, you know, what our target market is. They just send to me so I can have a listen and give some feedback. Um, and at, at that point in time, I assumed that they were a much more expensive driver. Um, you know, mm. they, they they sound great. Tried them in a couple of different boxes. Um, incidentally, there are some boxes available on the website if people want to have a look at some some that we've already worked on. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, looking at the design of the thing, uh, you know, it's difficult to see what's really any cheaper about it than the, some of the more expensive ones. So it's a great bargain. I, I, the, the thing I love about this driver, as I did with the CHR seventy when I when I when I when I um, first penned that drive and put that one together, is that um, for anybody who wants either a second system or wants to experiment with a, a first system or wants to um, um, add to different rooms or any, any application they've got where they need uh, a, a, you know, a good full range spectrum of sound and they want to do it relatively simply, um, this, the CHRs have, uh, you know, continue to hit the mark. I know we do the ranges, CHNs and so on. So. Yeah. You know, that, that I always think of as, you and I would think of as sort of a student range. You know, that really is for people on, on tighter budgets. And that's absolutely great. 
But uh, the reason I love to see how Charles and always have done is because I always felt from the very beginning, from, from back in the days when I produced the 70, is that we should be able to produce full range drivers at a reasonable price, the cost effective price that allowed more people to get into um, producing high quality uh, speaker systems, more than comparable to, um, to, to, to commercial to commercially bought systems, you know, name brands, finished product name yep. brand. Yep. And I honestly believe we've got to the stage now where um, in, a, in a well-made box, a well-designed box, of which you've mentioned Dr. Scott, Scott Lindgren and, 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 and the box is available on your site. Uh, I think we're at the point, particularly with this driver and with our uh, you know, more exotic drivers, I think we're at the point now where we're extremely comparable to a very or better um, than a than a than a, a shop bought system, quite honestly. Um, I'd be inclined to agree. Well, uh, as you know, you know we've been to a few shows uh, over the years. Mm. Um, we've been mm. sat next door to some extremely expensive kits in the room next door, uh, and we've had some DIY flat pack from myself and your drivers. Yeah, and, we're, uh, we're people spend people spend hours in there. Uh, we've surprised the, at the very shows you and I've done <laughs> yeah. over the last three years, probably prior to COVID. That was. Yeah, we yeah. Su- we surprised a lot of people. Indeed, yeah. um, you know, came came, came in and and, um, and asked as well, where's the subwoofer or where's the you know etc. <laughs> yeah. So, no, please go and have a look at the setup. Go forward to our show to our demo uh, section of our room and follow the cables and have a look. You know, yeah, you're welcome. That's it. And, Not this um, year, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't think there's going to be any shows yeah. this year. I know no, that the no, Northwest no. Audio Show has just been cancelled again. So, oh, well, has it? Yes, oh, right. unfortunately. So uh, hopefully I'll be there next year, and yeah. um, we'll we'll see what's what. Uh, I probably I mean we were talking about colours earlier, weren't we? So so yes. at the moment I've got that sort of standard silver colour there. Yes, oh, the nice gold. Got it, gold. Uh, now to be fair, in the early days with Mark Audio, um, we had a much softer metal cone technology. Uh, today, of course, we're using we're using multi mixed. Um, aluminium magnesium alloy grades of the sort you'll find what we call 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 series. Various applications mainly to do with aerospace. That's changed the game for us a lot for the last few years. Um, up until that point, we were using single or two grade aluminium alloys and um, they were softer. So the finish on the cones did matter. Uh, and um, uh, in the early days, people could hear a difference between a, a gunmetal colour cone and a, and a gold colour cone. Today, there's no difference at all in terms of uh, sound quality or performance because we're using, even on our most economic drivers, we're using uh, the aerospace or aerospace and, and aviation grade uh, mixed multi, mixed alloys. Um, I did get a question once, I think, on. Um, I forget which form it was, where I was sort of criticised for, um, for or, or, or people, the particular person that assumed I was using sort of marketing gobbledygook speak, which uh, isn't the case. Um, you know, we're, we're, I'm absolutely crystal clear about the types of material we use and, uh, and, and Mark Audio drivers simply wouldn't exist. Uh, it couldn't exist if we didn't actually use the types of materials that are near cutting edge. It's just not possible to get does that cone, that CHR90 cone, there it is, Yeah. you know, uh, to do that and not collapse. Yeah. Yeah, at the moment, that's that. I've got my finger on that. And obviously, normally, we don't suggest people do this for obvious reasons. But <laughs> I'm going to fully... I'm going to fully depress that cone and I'm going to be pretty, pretty hard about it. I'm, I'm pushing it, you know, right down to the bump stop, right yep. down to the arrestor and back. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something can, now. You know, I'll tell you um, something now. Yeah. I, keep, I keep this old CHS 70 on the uh, desk right. next to me. Yeah. It's my stress reliever. I just keep it on the desk next to me and I just <laughs> sit there doing this. <laughs> you know, so just to put people's minds at rest, um, you know, Naturally, we, 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 we're not producing subwoofers, so you know, we, we, we do ask everybody to be sensible. I mean, and for the sake of their own hearing in older age, if you're, if you're operating drivers at plus 90 dB, after 20 minutes, you're going to be doing damage to your hearing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. um, you know, uh, 
we the point is you know we we don't we're not in the damaging people's hearing business we're in the music right. business so yeah. so um um we we don't produce subwoofers but what we can say particularly with the 90 that you and i know we've heard them we love them is that they will produce a rich bass at a sensible sound level yeah. and um uh, and 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 that rich bass for us is comparable to most of most mid bases of the same or similar size in the market. Uh, and if we think about that, um, I think we I think the team, uh, uh, F and U, ourselves, Norio, Giselle, Stefan, myself, well, you know, Mark Audio is a family. Um, I know yeah. I founded the company, but increasingly over the years, uh, my role has been to enable. And facilitate a lot of growing talent within the company and the chr 90 is a result i concepted it i threw the ideas into the ring and um, helped the development of it but this is a very much a a, a, a combined team effort of which i'm very proud and um um to get to this point as i say where we can produce a driver that effectively is 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 pretty good at doing many things um allowing users to take advantage of it either as full range or in a, as a mid base or in a even in a large system as a as a, as a mid um those with their tuning experience and uh, building uh, networks crossovers etc i think they're going to have a very pleasant time playing around with this with this driver yeah I, I, and as we said earlier about the price it's uh it's going to encourage more people to, you know, have a play around. Uh, totally, yeah. Because, you know, let's face it, is if you completely destroy it because you've done completely the wrong thing with it, it hasn't really cost you a huge amount of money. So it's, um, yeah, whereas if you're spending that sort of money on an MS, you're probably less inclined to, pl to play. So I think this is, you know, this end of the market is really good. Uh, fertile yes. sort of end of the market, I think. And sure, it is. people might want to move up to the sort of higher end of the market eventually, but this gives, gives them a really good um, sort of introduction into... Into what, what what's interesting absolutely well what's interesting um um in the japanese market where i mean in terms of mark audio um um although things are changing in, in, interestingly but but traditionally the home of purist or near purist full range has always been japan uh, and that's our biggest market by volume um and um People there start on CHRs, you know, CHN, CHRs, Pluvius, and and it, and we see many, many customers come back, many followers in Japan. They've got three or four, even five sets of drivers. You know, they've mm -hmm. gone from um, uh, they've gone from, um, I say, a humble CHR or CHP, and they work their way up, and they've gradually got. We see many customers there who have now got MS11s or even, of course, the very very exotic MAOP drivers. Yeah. And um, and that's that, but that's interesting. What's interesting about that, especially for the viewers of this video, is that um, that uh, sort of um, that that enthusiasm and fun, um, building your own systems, enjoying your music, is sort of panning out to other regions, not least Europe. I mean, we you know we we are seeing a, a little bit of a resurgence, uh, partly because of COVID, I think, but also because people are looking for high quality, more purist music. Um, and, um, you know, uh, and, and to answer the, the inevitable question, will there be a paper version? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm always uh, going to yeah. ask that. <laughs> always going to be asked. Um, we are, this this year, COVID has slowed things down a bit, I freely admit. But this yes. year, we, you know, we, we, we are experimenting with several paper cones. And um, we, we very much hope to produce paper cones um, for those people who enjoy that type of um, sort of almost semi-vintage sound, I think, when you could describe it as. Um, um, it, it wouldn't, so I, I certainly would encourage anybody who's um, thinking about building their own system, maybe it may be, they'd be their first system, it may be their second or third, but if the, if the box sizes, you know, suit, um, they yes they could go to an ms driver or a pluvia they certainly could but if they feel that they would like 
you know, they're still early in the business of, um, of, of uh, learning about how to build speakers. The CHR is a wonderful option for all the reasons you said earlier. You know, it's, if, they, if they do get it wrong, or, you know, I don't know, install it and end up stabbing the, um, the cone with a screwdriver. Well, typically, anyway, you can get your, you can get your finger behind the cone and flatten it out, and you'll be amazed it still works. Well, um, you yeah, used to um, just sell them without these plastic covers, but now they've got these little plastic covers. There's no need for the driver, for the uh, screwdriver to, to slip in. If you just pierce a little hole through the um, through the plastic covers and put the screwdriver through that, then you can't slip anywhere for a start. And even if you do, you're only going onto yeah. the plastic cover. So, so always put your drivers in with these plastic covers on. Absolutely, and, and 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 I can tell you, I, I had a, you know, um, I, I I sort of had a lot of sleepless, yeah, some sleepless nights over that type of thing. Because you're absolutely right, we're helping the helping end users, installers, put their drivers into boxes, you know, with with little risk of damage, if any. But um, for those of you who know my passion about doing more with less and about the environment. Um, it's one more piece of plastic I wish we didn't have to make. Um, yeah. You know, uh, but that's fine. That's a debate that I'm happy. With. I think Mark Audio, you know, the whole, the whole point about Mark Audio when we first started it was to do less with more. You know, that's the, ma that's the mantra I always came out with. And um, well, things like this are a compromise, aren't they? Because if without this, yeah. you destroy this, and you've got to make another one of these then that's right. more than so more so than that. then then you know it's the lesser of two evils but I, I think i mean it's it's fair to say stefan that for you and me we we've all we always want to encourage people to go full range i mean that's us that's mark audio but we also have to accept that for some people and for many people that's not what they want to do yes so you know, we're, we're not here to say to anybody, well, you should be doing this or you must be doing this. I mean, that's, you know, not us, but 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 we are here to, I think Mark Audio is one of these companies that, that, that offers product which challenges people to do, to make a nice project. You know, I mean, you don't have to be an expert to make a nice speaker system. But what's interesting about Mark Audio is once somebody has used a pair of our drivers, I think sort of 99 times out of 100, they go, wow, I can get a sound like that from just one pair of drivers and a decent, yeah. half decent box. Yeah. And then that's it. There I've had quite a few yeah. people over this last, what's it been, 12 months since we had the CHN 50. Yeah. And they, they're cheap as chips. Um, and they buy them just because they've got a little audio project. Uh, you know, yeah. they maybe bought um, a little Wi-Fi board uh, and they just want to be able to plug them into their, to having a little sort of boom box type thing that they can carry around with them, not really expecting audio file quality out of it. You know, they just want to have a little project. And then they email yeah. me back absolutely astounded at, uh, you know, what they've managed to produce. Can get. Absolutely. And the CHR90 will, will, will it, I, I firmly believe, will achieve the same thing, the wow effect. Oh, my goodness. Look, what I, look, look at what I, what I can get out of this, you know, yes. this 90-millimeter diameter cone. You know, that's it. That's you know, it. That, you know. and, um, um, but that's fine because that's what we've been doing for almost two decades. Uh, and we're just continuing to improve and finesse the design. Um, for anybody that's used to an old Alpair 10, for example, this will be a very familiar driver in terms of its sort of tonal quality, um, slightly more benign, I think, um, um, which is, is, is fine. You know, it's, it's, it's a very easy listening driver. It plays the music. It doesn't play itself. And that, that's yes. another important thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. um, so many people over the years have said to me, goodness me, Mark, we're really surprised. So why is that? So, well, you know, we always expected metal cone drivers to sound metallic. And um, they say your drivers, particularly, uh, well, particularly that's the case with the MS drivers in particular. Um, they, 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 the, the, what people appreciate about them, because obviously they're at the high end of our market, is that they, they really do hear the music. It, you know, there's, there's the, the driver more or less is, it, the driver itself is almost a sideshow, yeah. you know, in terms of musical reproduction. And I think one of the one of the reasons full range drivers have always tended to be a, a, a small marginal market is because um, 
historically, the other manufacturers uh, have produced really good drivers, but they are full range. They sound full range. They have a limited output at the base, for example, that's very typical of a lot of full range drivers from, um, from various sources. Uh, we've never done that. We've always attempted to produce a full range driver that would do the same job as a multi-way system of a similar size, as opposed to being a, full, a, a completely separate entity, the the full range market, you know, the 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 um, the yeah. you know where it's very specialist um, uh, for only a certain few people, uh, almost elitist in a way. Uh, and, and you it know, was well, very just elitist. From, just, from, just from just from the air, just from the way you and I are dressing, we're <laughs> clearly not in that class, are we? You know. <laughs> no, I did toy with the idea of putting a shirt on, but. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah um I, you know i mean we 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 don't we 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 we're you know we think well outside that particular box quite literally excuse the point um and I, and i think that's where the chr comes in um you know in sort of summing it up i, I think uh, my feeling is that it's a it's a very good full range driver in its own right with very good base capability as well as delivering a, you know, a proper full range uh, um, yeah. at the affordable price to allow people to experiment without having to worry about cost. And, um, um, and, and if they like what they hear, it gives them an introduction to really a more modern form of full range driver, which um, is far more versatile. Hence the reason why you and I have discussed it in terms of its utility in both single single full range systems and multi-way um, and um, there are I'm sure there are other full range drivers out there that do that I mean we, we, we wouldn't boast we would no. never say we, we're completely unique but I, no. I, I, I get the feeling that I, I believe we're at the stage where we are leading the market in some respects. Yeah, well, we're cer certainly forerunners in that sort of thinking, I think yeah. it's, it's fair to say. Yes. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Mark, I think we should leave it there because I think we've covered yes. everything and we're using the uh, free mm. Zoom software. Um, little so right. Zoom there. And we only got half an hour, I think. And I don't know how long we've been, but uh, we normally witter on for a long time. So well, I think we'll <laughs> leave it there. So, um, so, right. uh, so there's the new driver, everybody. CHR90. Uh, we spent some time talking about it with Mark Fenlon of uh, Mark Audio there, and um, we'll see some of you guys in the future when we don't have to do this social distancing oh, thing, hopefully. So thank you very show, much for your yeah. time, Mark. All right. And uh, we'll I'll, speak, I'll speak to you soon, and thank you, everybody, for your customer. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.